last speaker for lunch is Grant. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So fine. Go for it. Okay. Um, so if everyone sat down, I'll just go ahead and start. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, calling metadata with a tool I plugin that I developed like for Recon NG. Um, so what is metadata? Does anyone in this room not know what metadata is? Okay. I'll just briefly go over it, but um, essentially metadata is any data that can describe the properties or attributes of another object. So say you have like a ball, um, the metadata for that ball might be, oh, it's red, or if it was manufactured in China or something like that. So essentially it's just data describing other data. So where can you find met metadata? Well, you can find it pretty much everywhere. Um, there's some really interesting examples, for example, in, in libraries. Libraries use it a lot to actually organize their books in databases. Um, databases use it to organize entries that are within it. Um, there's metadata in books, such as the author, the title, uh, where it was published, the year it was published, stuff like that. So because it's such an abstract concept, um, it comes into play really interestingly because there's many different types of data that metadata can apply to, um, which brings me on to my next slide. So the origins of metadata, well, essentially what I wanted to do, the project started out as I wanted to develop an open source alternative to FOCA. Um, does anyone in this room not know what FOCA is? Okay, I'll briefly explain what FOCA is. FOCA is essentially um, an online metadata crawler, so what you can do is you type in the site, right? And if we'll go off and say, oh look, here's all the publicly available documents for this site. Um, let's download them, extract their metadata, and then we can start forming a map. So we, just from the publicly available documents, we can see, oh okay, um, there's like a Windows XP machine running in the uh, target network, which has this user on it, which is running this software, and you have these printers in the network, and you can start building a really, really accurate map of a target corporation just based off of their public data. Now, the problem is um, I was going to develop that sort of tool, and then I realized there was another tool called MetaGrooveFilter.py. Has anyone not heard of that one? Um, which essentially did the same sort of thing. So I spoke to Rob, and we sort of started talking about what other things can we do. So I decided, he and I decided, um, oops, oh well. Um, there was meant to be an image here, I'll just show you a demo later, but um, essentially Recon NG, I decided to use it because, well, it's open source, it's modular in nature, and I just decided to use it because um, if I want to expand it later on, it will allow me to incorporate the features of other modules, and there's already features enabled within it, such as the bin API, which I'm using to query for my results. There's um, already a built-in search engine within, so built-in like method of querying the bin API that I'm able to take advantage of in my tool. So because of these reasons, I decided to sort of move it there so that it can be expanded on later. Um, so yeah, this is what metadata.py sort of looks like at the moment. So essentially we have um, an important option. Uh, the important option basically will go th through and basically say, okay, well, um, we have all this information in the documents that we have, but a lot of it isn't really important. So you've got stuff like how many pages are in the document or what the document security is. And for a typical pen test, you don't really need to know that. So that will basically filter that information out and only display the information that's important for a pen test. Um, the other, next option is the site option. Basically, you set the site. Um, you can either specify the www in front of it or leave it out. It's entirely optional. My tool, if you can't find the site from this, it will try prepending www in front of it and see if it can reach it on that site. Uh, next option is the text option. Basically, that will save the output to a file name. If you leave it out, it will just output onto the screen. And lastly, I have the type options. So there's several different types that I can query for right now. Uh, right now, the options are doc, PDF, 
PowerPoint to XLS. Alternatively, you can specify the all option, which will just query them successively one by one. So I'm going to try to give a quick demo and play to them. Regards, this actually works. Uh, I have recorded a video, which I'll briefly try and explain. Okay, so yeah, essentially I've loaded up the Recon NG here and I don't know, can you guys see that at the back? Okay, so essentially right now I'm just loading up the tool here um, and we're just going to show the options. So uh, I'm just going to forward the video a little bit because we've already sort of gone through the options here. Um, I'm just kind of skip over this somewhat. Okay, oops, um, let's, let's go back a little bit, sorry about that. Okay, so here basically I'm running this against homedepot.com um, and querying for the doc files. So right now it's just going through and saying, hey, we're downloading this file, this is where it's located if it doesn't download or if something's wrong, so you can go back. And now it's basically just prints out all of these different documents. You can see we've got the operating system, um, if it's an old file format, such as the doc file format, um, there actually is a field within it that specifies the specific operating system that was created on. The new XLS file formats don't have that, but they do have the application version of the creation software. I'll just pause this for five seconds. Um, you can also see other stuff like if you last saved the file, the author that created it, um, and sort of like the last save date and create time. So that's essentially the sort of information that you'll get from my tool. Um, I'll just carry on with the PowerPoint. So some of my future plans are at the moment if you have um, encrypted PDFs. So if someone was to encrypt a PDF with a password, um, right now I can't oops, I can't actually like decrypt the file and extract the metadata without knowing the password itself. So I am planning to potentially add like some basic dictionary attacks to see if I can actually guess the password. Um, I have been asked if this is legal or not. Uh, I might want. I might try and look into that to see if it's actually legal <laughs> before I add it in. Um, other things is I have, I'm planning to add additional support for file formats, uh, starting with images. Um, a lot of people have been asking about that. And I'm also planning to add threading. Threading at the moment, I've got it into the tool, but it's run so fast that nothing gets downloaded. Um, so I do need to work on that. If anyone's interested in helping with that, please do let me know. Um, yeah, that is a major feature I'm planning to add. Uh, yeah, so the final note is the tool is not yet in Recon NG. I tried to ask Tim, and then he basically said, well, I have a three-week um, religious vacation, so I haven't been able to get back to him on that. Um, he was very interested in the tool and getting it included, um, but like I said, plans being made to do so, it's just still being worked out at the moment. Okay, so... Robert McCarty was a great mentor on this. Uh, just want to give a quick shout out to him for that. Uh, the files will be hosted at here. Um, I will be sending out a tweet from, you can check at techwiz123, and I'll send out a link on Twitter. Otherwise, if you want to just copy that down quickly, um, that will basically be where all the files are hosted until they're included on Recon NG. So, is there any questions? How long did it uh, take you to code up? Uh, this project, it took on and off about three months. Um, a lot of it was actually taken from the MetaGoofil.py code, uh, which was open source, so I was able to sort of copy some of the code across. But this was actually a um, university research project, and then I decided to expand it and port it into EconNG. What file formats do you support? 
file formats at the moment are doc. Sorry, I did try and cover that, but I don't know if I went too fast. It's doc, um, PDFs, XOS formats, and PowerPoints. I was going to support uh, which text format files, but there's not enough metadata to really support that, so I've taken support out for it. Any other questions? How, how does it differ from like an open source search engine like you see or something like that? What do you mean by that? Is it like uh, YACY, there's an open source search uh, tools, kind of, you know, just as web uh, crawling, how does it differ to something like that? Is it just collecting more metadata? Or? Um, you're going to have to be a bit more specific on that. Like okay. it, it, it does collect metadata, but... Um, See, um, no, I just didn't know if you've ever come across that uh, project, YACY.org. No, I haven't. Okay. I just didn't feel if you've seen it. Okay. It's going to be on his list now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's built in Java and okay. does some similar things to this. Okay. It's like peer to peer uh, open source search engine. Okay. Yeah. What do you call it? YSCY. Yes, yes, yeah. Are you? So it's totally getting crawled as we speak. Don't mess. Anything else? Sorry. Uh, with regards to future file formats, we can consider implementing. Uh, Sorry, can you speak up a bit? With regards to future file formats, we can consider going through the archives, for example, that's stored on sites, extracting uh, documents from there. And there's some sites that have like zip archives, for example. So going through like the archives of a site, um, do you mean like the cache results or? Uh, well, some sites caches or, uh, for example, just archives of documents on sites. Uh, some, some sites are stored. Uh, like zip files or RAR files containing a whole library of uh, documents, of course they can be crawled as well. That would be something you'd consider implementing. So like implementing extracting metadata from archives. Um, yeah, that's the analogy suggested that might be a good idea to try and implement. I'll see if I can get that implemented. Cool. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you very much.